The fourth reading is taken from the book of Proverbs. Chapter 1, verses 20 to 33. And I'll be reading selected verses, so um, Vince is going to have his hands full (laughs) following along and switching the slides as, as we go. So beginning in chapter 1 at verse 20, listen to and for the word of God. Wisdom cries out in the street, in the square, she raises her voice. At the busiest corner, she cries out. At the entrance of the city gate, she speaks. How long, O oh simple ones, will you love being simple? How long will scoffers delight in their scoffing and fools hate knowledge? Give heed to my reproof. I will pour out my thoughts to you. I will make my words known to you. And then going to verse 32. For waywardness kills the simple, and the complacency of fools destroys them. But those who listen to me will be secure, and will live at ease without dread of disaster. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, I thank you for your word and thank you for the wisdom, your wisdom, which speaks into our lives. Open our minds and hearts to you, O God, by the power of your spirit, that we might see Jesus and hear him call us by name. And lead us by our hand in his to love God and to love others. To be the best neighbor in word and deed. We give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. If we were in Simpson Hall now, not for contemporary worship, but if we were there... You would see the backdrop to the band on the stage. You would see these words. Say no to say yes. Say no to say yes. According to an unknown source, being lost is living by a set of values that systematically dismantles your life. Being lost is living by a set of values that systematically dismantles your life. We need values, my friends, that guide our thoughts, words, and deeds. Loving God, loving others. Two values Christians hold dearly. And Jesus told us that they are the greatest commandment. But we need to learn to say no, to say yes. There's wisdom here. Remember, wisdom is knowledge that has proven the test of time. I find wisdom compelling in that it beckons me to keep hearing its voice searching me out calling me to a deeper experience of God and others and challenging me to trust the leading of the Holy Spirit. I hear wisdom's voice compelling me to respond, not react, in the public square as racism continues to raise its ugly head as it did at the Aliso Niguel and Santa Ana football game on Friday, September 7th at Aliso Niguel High School. At intersections when a driver gets angry at me for not driving fast enough. And the busy workplace where the bottom line tempts me to compromise my values. 
more and more I hear the challenging voice of wisdom, the voice of the Spirit, to say no to react and yes to respond. No to react and yes to respond. When it comes to give, for the sake of others, wisdom is essential. We began this series on giving last week, and it will not end, my friends, until November 24th, weekend of 24th and 25th. I am not simply talking about money. We are to give of our intellectual, emotional, spiritual, and financial capital for the sake of others. We are to be stewards of all that God has given us. And I'm convinced, as I told you last week, that this Christian wallet, that our lives, that's who we are. That we can reach into our lives, this wallet called our lives, and we can give of intellectual capital to another person, or emotional capital as we hurt and have compassion and walk where they are. Of our spiritual gifts we can give for the sake of that neighbor. Of our financial resources to that homeless person or to your church's ministries or to another not-for-profit for the sake of others. You know, there is no end of giving, my friends. But we need to learn to say no in order to say yes. That we need to budget our lives, not just our money. Budget our intellectual, emotional, spiritual, financial, it takes a budget. It really does, my friend. And our values inform how we budget. When it comes to give for the sake of others, wisdom is essential. At the foundation of God's wisdom about giving fully of ourselves rests this truth from God's Word. Proverbs 1, 32 to 32 reads, 32 to 33 reads, For waywardness kills the simple and the complacency of fools destroys them. But those who listen to me will be secure and will live at ease without the dread of disaster. We started with that anonymous citation, being lost is living by a set of values that systematically dismantles your life. The writer of Proverbs says, for waywardness kills the simple and the complacency of fools destroys them. Interesting wisdom, is it not? Note these important initiatives of wisdom. First, wisdom always shows up in a moment of need. Have you noticed that? When you're in a moment of need, wisdom shows up. The question is, will you be able to say no to the noise of your life? in order to say yes to the voice of wisdom. I was in Pennsylvania serving First Presbyterian Church of the Covenant, the cathedral church in downtown Erie, when in, on October 2nd, 2006, a killer entered the one-room schoolhouse in the Amish community of Nickel Mines, Pennsylvania. That killer lined up ten young girls and shot each of them point blank, killing five of them and seriously injuring the other five. This Amish community, within hours after the bodies were taken to hospital or to morgues, gathered and worshipped. They said no to revenge and yes to forgiveness. The minister and two elders of that community went 
to the wife and daughter of the killer and said, we forgive your husband, your father. How can we serve you in your time of need? Oh, my goodness. Wisdom showed up, did it not, that day? You see, forgiveness allows us to live. Revenge and bitterness kills us, does it not? And wisdom showed up that day, and that Amish community in Nickel Mines said no to revenge and yes to forgiveness. When we, the second point on wisdom is that when we do not listen to wisdom, the intended and unintended consequences of panic overtake us. When we don't listen to wisdom and we start reacting, panic has overtaken us. But if we say no to panic and reacting and say yes, to responding, we're budgeting our intellectual, our emotional, our financial, our spiritual resources in a way that can make a difference to that neighbor, to that friend, to that family member to that killer. And third, when we forget the ways of God's wisdom, we often end up saying and doing things we regret. I'm sure none of you ever struggle with that. I find myself walking back stuff, and as I'm walking it back, I'm just creating a bigger mess. Reaction is not healthy. Um, the writer of James talks about the tongue being a very small rudder. Do you, do you realize how this by here really guides a lot of life, does it not? Wisdom always will show up in your moment of need. And wisdom is always calling us to not panic, to respond. And wisdom wants us to not forget the ways of God. Because wisdom really doesn't want us to live with regret. Well, you heard me last week refer to our lives as Christian wallets. I mentioned it again this morning. Um, sometimes we have such difficulty saying no that we end up living our lives on fumes because there's nothing there to give. Um, I don't know about you, I've only one time in my life have I received an overdraft notice from the bank. And fortunately I addressed it and, and realized that it was more of their error than me just writing a bad check. It was a timing of deposits and when the check showed up. But that was no fun. And being in debt financially is really no fun. Um, it's a hard reality of life. But I'm beginning to see that my life and budgeting my life, my intellect, my emotion, my spirit, my finances, my whoever I am, um, at times I'm on overdraft notice intellectually. Like, I go there and there's nothing to take. I take it, but I get the overdraft notice. It's like, imagine your intellect and your emotion and your spirit and your finances like an ATM machine. And you've already taken out your 300 worth of intellect, right? The machines only give you 300 a time, right? A day. And we just keep going thinking there's going to be something there. Because we need to say no 
in order that when we say yes, there's something there to give. How many of you have a hard time saying no? And what are some of the reasons that Steve Marsh has a hard time and you have a hard time saying no? I don't want to disappoint people. I don't want to be irresponsible. I don't want the church elders to think I'm not working. Um, my list is long. and I bet yours is too. Well, sometimes by not saying no, it then becomes a yes. And who shows up is really not worth anyone's time. Have you ever felt that where you're fulfilling a commitment and you're, you're going, I have nothing to give? Because you're so what? Spent. Have you ever used that word? Spent? I have nothing more to give. I say that to Janet all the time. And she says, only knew, you know how to say no. Aren't spouses awesome? <laughs> they speak the truth. And now after almost 40 years of marriage and three years of dating, she cuts to the chase so quickly. There's no more apologetic. No more preamble. No more... You're the most amazing person I've ever known. <laughs> it's just like, whenever I do my little thing, she's now saying, only you can say no. Only you can budget your time, your intellect, your ability to have compassion on others, our finances. Only you can say no to say yes. Mike Slaughter in his book, The Christian Wallet, emphasizes the importance of budgeting with a strong inference to all aspects of life. I encourage you to get that book and read it. He writes, it's common sense that you can't reach a destination or hit a target that you haven't identified. And budgeting is no exception. So if I want to give of my intellect, and five years as a college professor, I gave a lot of that, but if I don't budget what I can give there, my students are getting nothing. And when I walk with members of congregations in Stephen ministry, if I don't budget how much compassion I can give, or how much empathy, then when I show up, I don't know what these people get. If it's all, if the ATM card comes right back out. You know what I'm talking about. Say no, to say yes. Budgeting and values, my friend, is not simply about money. It's about our whole life. It's about who we are and what we have to give in conclusion. Loving God, loving others. Being the best neighbor. What values? They're awesome. But say no to say yes to a budgeted life that loves God and others. That kind of life makes a difference. Budget who you are so that your loving God and loving others and being best neighbor can find a rhythm. And guess what? As not only my wife, but every mentor in my life says, Steve, get over yourself. You will always disappoint people. Regardless of how well you do it or how well budgeting's going or you know what I'm saying, right? We always will disappoint someone. So don't say yes because you don't want to disappoint. Don't say no because you don't want to disappoint. Hold your head high and say no. Because if I say yes, who you're getting, you're going to quickly say, get me, get that guy out of here. Have you ever said yes to something for all the wrong reasons and within minutes after starting this commitment now, that is for the next three months you're going, this is sucking the life out of me. 
Have any of you ever had those experiences? Yeah, no one wants to really nod. <laughs> Some of you are going, because Pastor Steve, I never want to disappoint you. I've said yes to so many things, but I need to find meaning in my life again. Well, let's start saying no in order to say yes. Wouldn't we be happier people if we could say no and then actually have our yes be where our passion and gifts are? Wouldn't that be wonderful? Hey, we're all in this together, amen? None of us have this wired perfectly. And type A personalities like me, man, I need to go home and just watch this video. Thank you, Ken, for doing it. I need to watch this like nonstop for 10 weeks. But I'm asking you to enter that journey. Say no to say yes. Budget and values go together in our lives. So as Jesus told Peter in the gospel reading, we're to deny ourselves, pick up the cross, and follow Jesus in his way of life. The more often I can say no, I understand how I'm denying something I may want in order to say yes to something Jesus is asking me to do. Jesus shows us how to say no to a life of self-promotion, to say yes to a life of self-giving. So my friends say no to say yes. Amen.